There is seriously no time like the present to go walk on a treadmill and remain stationary next to a bunch of strangers for an hour or so. making another one of these vests this week. Even cowgirls get the blues on the front, cowboy boot on the back. This sweater is my most requested pattern. So we're gonna make this again, but it's gonna have the dimensions of this vest. This vest cuts in a little bit more. It's not as boxy. I just like the measurements of this one better, which is why I put off writing this pattern for so long is because I've been wanting to change the dimensions of it. And it feels weird to sell that if I haven't actually like made it in those dimensions. Apparently there's a book called Even Cowgirls Get the Blues. I have not read it. The reason why I made that vest is because I was scrolling on Pinterest. I saw a shirt that said even cowgirls get the blues and I thought that's kind of a cute saying and ta-da did not know there was a book it's also such a silly phrase to me like even cowgirls get the blues as if cowgirls are the most emotionally strong women you've ever encountered do I identify as a cowgirl I am from Tennessee actually one of the funnier things that like makes me think that I am a cowgirl is when I went away to boarding school I had never been to New England before visiting the school neither had my parents or either of my siblings we had never felt cold like that so when I decided to transfer high schools my parents made sure that I had a good winter coat and corduroys and long sleeve shirts etc but one thing we overlooked was shoes for the snow. I don't know why we kind of looked over that. The only shoes I had to wear for the first few months of school were cowboy boots and there was no traction on the bottom of those. So I was slipping all over the snow. It had snowed like in October that year and I had seen snow maybe like two, three times in my life. Did not know how to walk through snow and I just felt like this dumb girl from Tennessee walking through the snow in her cowboy boot and everyone probably looked at me then and thought that girl's a cowgirl. She does not know where she is even cowgirls get the blues which is just a watered down way of saying depression i've ridden a horse one time in my life by the way We are doing Runyon this morning and I'm really excited because it's Sarah's first time. So I feel like a tour guide, even though there's like not much to show, but I still feel like a tour guide. <laughs> She's been giving me all the tips and tricks. I'm like, okay, so we're gonna go left here, which is really <laughs> sweet. And there's a cute man. He's right there. Mm -hmm. week throughout my window I've been watching this tangerine 
on this tree just like waiting for it to fall it's been really really windy and i just live in fear that i'm going to wake up one morning and this tangerine isn't going to be there and a squirrel is going to get it off the grass before i can most of the tangerines on the tree right now are green this is the only one that's like slightly orange and i really have been missing eating tangerines off this tree that like when it falls i have to be the first one to it i have quite the update you guys won't believe what I'm about to tell you. So we did in fact finish a panel. Please hold for show and tell. That looks lovely, right? It does, it looks very lovely. The bad news is that I knitted this panel on US six needles and did not notice until I was literally going to put this panel on a pair of spare needles and I went to go grab my US six needles to put it on, come to find out, been knitting with them the whole time. I'm supposed to be knitting with US eight needles. And the whole time I was knitting, I was thinking, why are my fingers cramping more than usual? And it's because I was knitting with US sixes. The smaller the needles, I feel like the more my hands hurt. I really can't believe that I did that. Uh, so I did just waste like a whole day of knitting. I am constantly being humbled by my knitting. You know, just when you think that you are learning more skills and you are improving, you really have to remember the basics, such as making sure you're knitting with the right needle size. So I am going to have to do this over. It will take a whole day for me to do that. For you guys, it'll be like two seconds for me to complete. Uh, but for me, just know that it is going to be an entire day of self-hatred. But I guess that's just like any other day, so it's really nothing new. Instead of redoing the front panel today, I think I'm actually going to do the boot. You know, let this kind of sit and marinate before I undo it all. <laughs> It is about 11 p.m. and I am clocking out of my knitting shift for today. It is really disheartening to think if I had done the first panel correctly, I would literally finish this tomorrow. That's fine. There's literally nothing wrong with that, by the way. It's so fun to do shapes. I feel like I tend to do a lot of words, so this is a reminder that I should do more shapes. This was actually one of the cooler things that a boy told me on a first date. He was like a software engineer or something. And he told me that the original icons on computer desktops were actually designed by cross stitchers. Because if you think about it, pixels, tiny little squares that make up an image. Knitting is the same thing. Every single stitch is a square. That's why I plan all of my patterns on graph paper. So you just decide what color you want each square to be, then that's how you make an image. So it totally makes sense that like icons on desktops were made up by cross stitchers because they're just doing pixel art. I'm just doing pixel art. I'm basically a software engineer when you really think about it. This might be very obvious, but I think it's really cool. So like just indulge me and like let me nerd out a little bit. When you think about a high quality photo versus a low quality photo, a higher quality photo has a ton of pixels. A lower quality photo has fewer pixels in that amount of space. If you have bigger needles and bigger thread and smaller needles and smaller thread, and let's say you're knitting 20 inches across the front panel, there's going to be more stitches with the smaller thread and smaller needles than the chunkier thread and the chunkier needles within that same 20 inches. Are you getting me? Fewer pixels with the bigger needles and bigger thread, more pixels with the smaller needle and smaller thread. So basically when you go down in needle size and down in thread size, you can make more complicated images. So if I wanted a more detailed boot than this, I would just keep decreasing my needle size and thread size so I can fit more pixels within the same length across my body. Maybe this is obvious if you actually knit, but I knit and it's still mind blowing to me. I think it's so cool. She's perfect. I love her. I am very tired and I have to actually organize some tax stuff before I go to bed. So that that's gonna be, that's gonna be sick. All of these things are slanted. It looks like an earthquake happened. The time has come for me to unravel this panel and it is going to break my heart, but I'm gonna do it. I really still cannot believe that I knit this on the wrong needle size. Like that is such... <sighs> Should probably be wrapping this around something, huh? This could be a total disaster. So uh, let's just, let's just see. Look at this. We had some hiccups, but this is crazy. I'm obsessed.
y'all didn't really need to see me making that front panel again. So we're just skipping to the part where I did it. Now we just need to do the ribbing for the collar and around the armhole openings. We're like basically done. I think I might be able to finish this today. The collar is complete. My back neighbor is doing a photo shoot for work, which he told me about. He texted me this morning. He was like, hey, we're doing a photo shoot, but there's just like 20 people in our backyard. The blinds aren't down in my room, but I know that they can't see in because every time Megan has walked by, she says that she can't see in. So there's just all these people outside of my window that they like don't know that I'm just knitting in my bed. I could shut my blinds, but I'm also kind of nosy. Look at that guy up on the roof. What is happening? It is done. The measurements are way more to my liking. So let's compare this one and this one. See, it's way more boxy. I love them both, but this is the one that I'm gonna write a pattern for because I just feel like it's a much more flattering fit. Now I have to take pictures in it. What about that? Ew. How did I not, <laughs> how did I not notice you take that? <laughs> Stop with me. Oh. Ew. What's wrong? Did That's I bop? You from behind. Like, those are cute. Oh yeah, those are okay. Oh, well, you look like you did when you were a baby in that. <laughs> maybe let's do 0. 0.5 to kind of like fix the body dysmorphia of it all. Like maybe I could do something that's like, yeah, and I look like, like really that. skinny. Like, ooh. Yeah, maybe not my face. Yeah. Maybe this is a post where people just don't know my identity. And that is the end of the vlog. Depending on when you're watching this video, the pattern is not for sale. I'm getting some girls to test knit the pattern, and so that'll take a few weeks, and then it will be for sale. If it is for sale, it'll be in the description. If it's not in the description, that means that it is not yet for sale, but it will be in the near future. Thank you for watching. Please feel free to comment any vlogs you wanna see. Any, I like a good prompt, maybe like leave a vlog title. I know my knitting videos aren't necessarily a crowd pleaser. I think people probably prefer more of a traditional vlog or just an idea. You can just, you can kind of just leave anything that you want. Thank you for watching. I love each and every one of you, of course. Duh, bye.